on Billboard tonight, wise words from Yorkshire, a talented film star from Asia and Hugh Richards from Spain. Welcome to Billboard with me, Ted Stanley, for a roundup of theatre, music, art and literature in East Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. We start tonight with news of the world premiere in Beverly of Horseshoes and Hand Grenades by American playwright Richard D. Cushing. Tony Barker went to find out more. It's set uh, in East Yorkshire uh, and it obviously deals with the, the build-up to the First World War and how it affects the local lives of the villagers and of course it centres around the smithy where the, the blacksmith works and he has a son who's um, late teens so he's you know on the cusp of either volunteering or possibly later on being called up. Um, of course, he's got a sweetheart in the village. The sweetheart's got a brother who goes off to war. Lord Stenton, my character, has a, a son who's a cavalry officer who, who goes off to war. And, and it's very much about the effect of uh, the war on the local lives of the people in, in East Yorkshire. And it takes you through this lovely story. Some of it's traumatic, some of it's poignant, some of it's... Um, mildly um, distressing, but some of it's humorous. I mean, there's such a lot in this play. Horseshoes and Hand Grenades is at the East Riding Theatre until the 19th of October. Tickets from 01472 8740050. Submissions for the 2019 Hammond House International Literary Competition close on the 30th of September. Winners will be announced in December and prizes awarded at the annual Literary Festival in February. Entry details and more information from hammondhousepublishing.com. Now, here with more literary news, Hugh Richards from his Spanish hideaway with a review of some of the latest book releases. The memoirs of an ex-Prime Minister can never be objective and must always be defensive. David Cameron's self-justification for the record does record his inheritance of a financially broken country, the celebration of the London Olympics, the recognition of gay marriage, the Arab Spring and the Scottish referendum. But admire Cameron or just blame him. This is his history of the Brexit referendum. He is contrite, but he can't show where all the bodies are buried, if only because, sadly, so many of the most vile bodies are still walking around in British politics. Medieval adventure now in the hands of one of our greatest writers of historical thrillers. In the second sleep, Robert Harris takes us to the lonely moors of Devon in the 15th century for mystery, mysticism and ancient superstition. A young priest arrives in a small village to find evidence of the occult, whether in ancient Rome, fin de siècle Paris or Nazi Germany. Harris always delivers a fascinating tale. Let's hope this is not his last adventure in the Middle Ages. After numerous travel books and a few explanations of complicated science for simple readers, Bill Bryson now presents us with ourselves, or at least our physical selves. In The Body, a guide for occupants, he unravels the strange and vulnerable workings of human anatomy, physiology and medicine. Bryson is always entertaining and here never too gory about the blood and guts. Doctors are clearly useful, but most of the time our bodies just get on with fixing themselves. Geoffrey Archer, Lord Archer of Western Supermare, is a deceitful perjurer and a bully, but deceit is what we expect of fiction writers. His latest novel, Nothing Ventured, is a detective story designed to be the first in a series. His hero proceeds from plodding the beat to investigating the theft of a Rembrandt masterpiece. He falls for an art expert and reveals the fiendish plans of the thief and his even more fiendish lawyer. As ever with Archer, the prose is mechanical, the characters are cardboard, and the dialogue is inhuman, but you just can't stop turning the pages. And with that said, from Spain, just recovering from the rain. Salud. Adios, you te via pronto. Still on a literary theme, the Lincolnshire Writers Group, sponsored by Hammond House, have been busy expanding their activities. Groups are now established in Grimsby, Immingham, Louth and Horncastle, and new groups will be starting soon in Cleethorpes and Alford. If you're interested in joining or forming a writer's group, more information is available at lincolnshirewriters.com. As well as great writers, there's also great music in the region. Here's Kirsty Hanna to tell us more. An inspiring lineup of national music talent will be appearing at Cleethorpe's Jazz Weekend at Moon on the Water between the 27th and 29th of September, featuring Randolph Matthews, Leanne Carroll and Ian Shaw. 
and you can expect inventive riffs, moody melodies and stunning guitar solos from French guitar wonder Felix Rabin on Saturday the 26th of October. And at Lincoln Drill Hall on Thursday the 17th of October, critically acclaimed folk stars The Unthanks will take audiences into the darkly passionate world of Emily Bronte with a song cycle of quiet beauty. Alternative acoustic singer-songwriter and X Factor winner James Arthur is at Hall's Bonus Arena on Friday the 11th of October. And founding father of synth-pop Gary Newman brings his unmistakable new wave sound to asylum at the Hall University Union on Monday the 14th of October. <laughs> Compelling and energetic performer Pete Morton makes a welcome return to Grimsby Folk Club on Sunday the 13th of October. Expect humour, politics, love and social commentary from this remarkable singer-songwriter. And finally, a band that are taking the UK folk scene by storm, stunning audiences wherever they play with stomping tunes and captivating stories. The Trials of Cato are at the club on Sunday the 27th of October. Don't Feel It, Fight It returns to Moon on the Water in Cleethorpes on Friday the 11th of October with a great lineup of bands including Electric Priestess, My Fake Empire and The Resistance. Tickets from moononthewater.co.uk Sarah Munro is one of the new generation of lyrical singer-songwriters whose music is popular across the generations. I caught up with her on her UK tour before a recent gig at the Riverhead Theatre in Louth. Matt, you play lead guitar and bass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So constantly changing between the two in, in the set, which is it's always good. Jogs keeps you uh, alert. If you ever see me pick one up and then put it down, I'm like, <laughs> no, that, that's Whoops. not that one. Yeah. And James, what, what's, what's your instrument? Uh, saxophone and drums. But not Again, not the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that is something to work on. Yeah. Sarah, there's the, 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 a bit of a clue in the name, really, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. I, I, presume, I presume you do the singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what are your musical influences? Um, so, um, I'm very much, in terms of like vocally, uh, very much Eva Casti. I uh, absolutely love her and big fan of Karen Carpenter as well. Um, and in terms of writing, it's, it's kind of focused on st storytelling. I love writing lyrics, the lyrics is the favourite part for me. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a broad range, but it all comes down to that storytelling aspect. In the times that we've had, the times we've had it all. What are the challenges for professional musicians these days? <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> Um, Managing to make a living. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. you, more so than ever, you have to be extremely diverse and you can't just be, this is the one thing I do. It's you've got to, you've got to be able to do a little bit of everything. You know, some, you've got to be able to produce your own stuff, distribute your own stuff, write, play. You are the one. But you, you just have to accept that you can't make music money off of recording music and that is just the way it is now. Um, you know, I think the gigging aspect of it is 
one I think is better than a recorded thing because you're going to see a different performance every night so yeah. hopefully it's better than the last time than, uh, you know, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know obviously when you have a new album your fans are going to love to hear you play that album live as well so I think that's a big part of it yeah, yeah and yeah. you can do something different with it live you know yeah. or you can strip it back and sometimes people like it that way you know yeah. they think it's yeah. more intimate and yeah. It just gives you more scope to, especially with the technology in live mm. music now, mm. you can, mm. if you want to, recreate a very big sound, yeah. which previously would have been mm. impossible. Mm. After this tour has ended, which will be just at the end of this year, um, we're going to go back in the studio and got a third album lined up and there's a few things of songs that I've had on the back burner which I really want to record and get all my musician friends to help record and then we're all going to write some new stuff together um, Matt and I have written a few tracks get James doing some production, doing some writing so um, you know even Rosie up there plays cello we're going to get her on it um, you know just try and, try and involve as many people as possible You can listen to more of Sarah's music and check out her tour dates at sarahmonroemusic.com. After the break, a beautifully crafted new film from Lu Wang, cultural developments in the Casbah, and what's on where you are in box office. One organisation can't make communities safe from fire, from floods, from emergency situations. It needs to be a whole community response and we see the Blue Light Brigade as a good opportunity to do that. It's um, a group of individuals, some are ex-emergency services, some ex-armed forces, some are just community members. They receive a level of training which gives them a little bit more knowledge than the, the neighbours may have and so we can then assist emergency services. Whether you're an ex-service officer or a conscientious local resident, you too can play an important role in the safety and well-being of your community as a proud member of the Blue Lights Brigade. Coming up on tonight's show, art exhibitions with Sarah Hunter Carson and a festival of words in Yorkshire. But first, welcome to a new presenter on Billboard, actor and playwright Liz Drury with our review of the latest film releases. Award-winning films from the Sundance Festival feature on Film Review tonight, including a challenge to your moral compass and an emerging star of Asian cinema. But first, the most awarded film at this year's festival, Honeyland, a visually stunning portrait of the delicate balance between nature and humanity. It follows the story of Hatids, who lives a solitary life with her ailing mother in the mountains of Macedonia where she makes a living cultivating honey using ancient beekeeping traditions. Her peaceful existence is thrown into upheaval by the arrival of an itinerant and unruly family. Lulu Wang's The Farewell introduces the highly talented Asian film star Aquafina to a worldwide audience. 
Aquafina plays Billy, who returns with her family to China under the guise of a fake wedding to stealthily say goodbye to their beloved matriarch, who doesn't know she has just a few weeks to live. I want to believe that's a good thing. In Queen of Hearts, director Mai El Tuki deftly pushes all the buttons to challenge our moral compass and focus our interest in how far events will go and what the consequences might be when we follow a middle-aged lawyer's twisting relationship with her teenage stepson. Our family film tonight is Asterix and the Secret of the Magic Potion. The storyline may be a little thin, but the graphics and charm are a tribute to the origins of the franchise. When Asterix and his friends set off to find a successor for elderly druid Getafix, whose magic potion protects them from the Romans, evil druid Sulphurix tries to steal the secret of the magic potion. All these beards! Which one do I need? <laughs> what are you adding that for? Same thing happens every time. This one's different! By ten, if it hasn't exploded, then we're safe. One. <laughs> If you're as good a druid as a fishmonger, we should sell tickets. So, what's up, you big tub of lard? Can't got your tongue? Squawk! I'll show you who's the man! Eat. Huh? Guess it's worn off now. Well, best things come to an end and all that. Nice time with you. On DVD and Blu-ray, Shock Corridor and Naked City from Criterion Collection, Local Hero from Spirit Entertainment, with a great soundtrack by Mark Knopfler, by the way, and Once Upon a Time in the West from Paramount Pictures are also worth a look. You can see more of Liz in Dick Whittington at Barton in December. And in October, the Bilton Amateur Dramatic Society are performing Peter Gordon's hilarious comedy, Slayed to Death. Tony Barker caught up with them at rehearsals. Head. Oh, really? I first read this soon after it was written because we'd, we'd done another um, Inspector Pratt play prior to this called Secondary Cause of Death and I read this one and immediately I wanted to do it but of course it was going on professional tour at the time so we couldn't do it then uh, and then the next time I wanted to do it we didn't have the cast and this time around I'm just so pleased with the cast we've got because every character fits the part perfectly um, age-wise Character-wise, I couldn't be happier. They're just, they're just so good. I'm so pleased with it at the moment. I can't find her, Sarge. I think she must have got behind the skirting board. You don't mean to say he's lost the creature in my office. Slay to Death runs from the 16th to the 18th of October at the Bad Theatre in Bilton. Tickets from the theatre box office 01482 812 750. A new landscape exhibition by scientists turned artists Sue Slack is inspired by foal running on the North York Moors. Tony Barker went to meet her. Well, as I said, it's a shape of the land that, uh, that influences me, that gets me into a composition. Um, and um, I know every lump and bump of the, of the landscapes that I, I paint, actually. I do a lot of the fell races around where I live. Um, I do a lot of cycling as well, and if I'm out on a fell run, or just on, not necessarily a race, but a run, um, I maybe see a view that I think, oh, I must come back here and do that painting. Sue's exhibition runs until the 19th of October at the Pocklington Arts Centre. Now, here's Sarah Hunter Carson with news of other art events around the region. At the Sam Scorer Gallery in Lincoln, Denise Hawthorne and Friends Lines of Lincolnshire exhibition celebrates the rich and varied landscape of the county. Through paintings and studies in a variety of media, each artist responds to their environment in a unique and personal way. 
Ecstatic Rituals at the Humber Street Gallery in Hull explores the tradition of Hull Fair through a series of sculpture, performance and installation. Also at the Humber Street Gallery, Equineopolis, an exhibition by Danish artist Aniara Oman, considers our collective hope for what the future might look like, which is heavily shaped by both our past and present. At the Muriel Barker Gallery in Grimsby, Grimbarians is a photo documentary project created by Grimsby-born photographer Dan Clark. The project aims to tell the stories of the great and fascinating people who were born in the area or have moved here and made a positive change to the community in their own way. And finally, Brick by Brick at 2021 Visual Arts Centre in Scunthorpe is a brand new touring exhibition of work by international artists, designers and photographers who use Lego bricks as their medium. The show includes a range of two and three dimensional work in a variety of scales from jewellery to sculpture and aims to showcase the wide range of creative approaches that artists take when using this iconic construction brick. Art in all its forms features in a new initiative to regenerate the Casbah, a cluster of fascinating buildings in the Grimsby Fish Docks. A recent open day organised by the Port Authority saw visitors exploring the history of the area and hearing about the plans for regeneration. One initiative being explored by East Street Arts is to establish a hub of creative workspace. Focus group sessions are running on Wednesday the 2nd of October at Grimsby Minster. For more information, contact eaststreetarts.org.uk. The East Riding Festival of Words is a celebration of books for both adults and children. Tony Barker went to find out more. We're really privileged that Raina Wynne herself is going to be hosting the discussion here at the Treasure House on the Sunday. It's a free event, it's open to everyone, and we think that it will generate a lot of, well, Raina's book um, covers huge issues such as homelessness and health, but again, um, she describes the landscape so beautifully that there is something for everyone. So loads of strands for discussion there, and it just will bring the community together in a celebration of reading and in a celebration of um, enjoying the spoken word as well, really. I'm the host of the Meta Day this year, uh, which in... Uh, brings together a group of crime writers from the Murder Squad, as they're known, um, which is led by Anne Cleves, whose work has appeared on the television. Uh, and it's a fantastic coup for this service to get them into these riding for the festivals. The festival is hosted by various venues from the 15th to the 20th of October. Full details and tickets at festivalofwords.co.uk. Now, fresh from another festival, this time in Edinburgh, here's our very own culture queen, Janine Reader, with What Somewhere You Are in Box Office. Yes, uh, you could say I'm no longer an Edinburgh fringe virgin. Now, the Riverhead Theatre in Louth has a packed list of events in October, starting with The Bouncers, John Godber's hilarious story of a night out on the town, which runs from Wednesday the 2nd to Saturday the 4th. The band from County Hell, featuring Julie McClelland, play their take on original Celtic folk music on Saturday the 5th and on Friday the 18th, you can see The Immigrant, a heartwarming slapstick comedy inspired by Charlie Chaplin's film. Children over three can enjoy all the fun of the fur when award-winning West End play The Tiger Who Came to Tea comes to Grimsby Auditorium on the 2nd and 3rd of October. You can catch up with comedians Jimmy Carr on the 4th and Gary Delaney on the 11th of October and on the 13th of October Sun Records All-Stars recall the sights and sounds of this iconic record label. Also in Grimsby, the Caxton Theatre Company presents a bunch of amateurs directed by Deborah West. 
Theatrical worlds collide when fading Hollywood action hero Jefferson Steele arrives in England to play King Lear in Stratford, only to find that this is not the birthplace of the Bard, but a sleepy Suffolk village with an amateur theatre company. There's a, a great deal of a slapstick comedy, but there's also an awful lot of heartfelt, poignant scenes uh, threaded throughout. Um, Byron plays Jefferson Steele, the fading Hollywood hero. Can I just ask first, did you pick me because of my ageing qualities or my good luck qualities? Oh, no. <laughs> Which I don't have, of course. <laughs> <laughs> From Thursday the 3rd of October, Hull Truck Theatre hosts a Tony Award-winning comedy thriller, The Beauty Queen of Linane, by Martin McDonough, writer of the Oscar-winning Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. From Wednesday the 16th of October, the Box of Trick Theatre Company presents Under Three Moons, a new play about friendship and growing up, exploring who we are and how we live and the spaces between. A bunch of going for it. A big night changed the world. When they're older, I bet they'll think, yeah, that night by the fire, that was summer, that was. Doubt I'll even remember tonight. At the East Riding Theatre in Beverley, the world presents the premiere production of Richard D. Cushing's Horseshoe for Hand Grenades, and it continues until the 19th of October. It's True, It's True, It's True, on the 25th of October, tells the story of how a woman took revenge through her art to become one of the most successful painters of her generation. And the Candlelight Sessions on Sunday the 6th of October feature York-based jazz band Leathero with their textural influences of folk, rock, classical and gypsy jazz. Well, that's almost all for this month's show. You can keep up to date with the latest entertainment news on our Facebook page and to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes, click the subscribe button below or go to www.billboardtv.uk. If you would like us to feature your own event on Billboard, you can email details to news at billboardtv.uk. <laughs> From everyone on the Billboard team, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next month with more entertaining news, entertaining guests and great music. You are the one the one if I give my heart I'll lose it all and more If you say Children over three can enjoy all the fun of the fur. Is it fur? When the Nashville. Sabine. Hold truck host. In North Highcombe on Sutton. Oh dear. <laughs> Group sponsored by Hammond House. Sabine. Who writes this stuff? From Thursday the 3rd of October. Oh, sh sh I'm laughing now, sorry. No, because we haven't got to the end. <laughs> After the break, a beautifully crafted... Did what? Didn't I say that? What did I say? <laughs>